V8 Supercars or Supercars Championship is a competition held in Australia. The games I am going to talk about in this video are inspired by that competition. They are actually tie-in games to that Australian competition. The first game was released near the launch of the PSP alongside games like Wipeout or Ridge Racer. And as a starting title, I must admit that even if you weren't Australian, the game was appealing. The game makes excellent use of the V8 license. Having a good simulation based gameplay for that time, and especially for a PSP game, it has good graphics and some nice looking damage models. Damage models also affect the handling and the speed of your vehicle, so you have to drive carefully and clean, as any bump or damage can affect the car and make you lose. And it's nice that you can tune your car with the ability to change settings like suspension, ride height, tires, brake bias and more. And you can tweak these settings with sliders which makes it really detailed. The career mode of the game has the same stereotypical story of you being a nobody that rises to fame. And like in other games, it works. It works in this game too. Also it's nice that in the career mode you'll be racing in different vehicles ranging from trucks and high performance vehicles to formula racing and rally cars there are actually 15 vehicle types and more than 50 tracks in the game and each vehicle feels very different when being handled and not only that each car handles different but each type of terrain is different when you drive on it asphalt, snow or sand have a different effect on cars and a feature that more games should have is that you can play custom tracks stored on your PSP in this game. You can play your own music tracks during races. And this is not the only musical strong point of the game. The engine sounds are so good they can cause orgasms. And it's amazing how much detail was put into the sound. Not only that each car sounds different and accurate, but when you damage your engine you can hear it rattle. Or you can hear the turbo injections do their job in vehicles equipped with it. The variety in gameplay is almost uncanny. You don't get just V8 supercars. You actually get so many cups that the game feels like it's made for everyone who's into simulation games. You get NASCAR circuits so that the NASCAR fans can play NASCAR type races on the PSP as there's no NASCAR game on the console. F1 enthusiasts can play F1 cars, can play with F1 cars, there are dirt tracks that with the amazing mechanics of the game feel better than Colin McRae on the PSP. There are street races, even hot rod races. And for a moment I was wondering if it's better than Gran Turismo on the PSP, the critically acknowledged best racing simulation game on the platform. And this means something. I mean, it's in the same league. It's debatable if it's better, and I don't think that it's better, but what is certain is that this game is a masterpiece. Gran Turismo has better car physics, and it's whopping 800 cars are crazy, but V8 has game mechanics very close to Gran Turismo in quality, and has a career mode which is interesting and which is lacking in Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo doesn't have a career mode. But on the other hand V8 doesn't even get close to the crazy amount of vehicles you get in Gran Turismo. Also the graphics are better in Gran Turismo and the car mechanics too. And as amazing as V8 is, I still consider Gran Turismo being better. So it's debatable. I haven't had sleepless nights because of this and didn't make an in-depth analysis. It's just that when replaying the two games, I stayed and wondered for a moment which is better. And that, for an unknown PSP game, means a lot. I mean, it's a worthy challenger against the best simulation game on the PSP. And this means a lot for a game you never heard before. And V8 Supercars 3 Shootout is another PlayStation 2 port. This time the game doesn't have a story based career mode, but rather a world challenge mode, where you take on challenges of various difficulties, so V8 Supercars 3 tries to beat Gran Turismo at its own game. And it fails. 
the challenges aren't as fun as in Gran Turismo. Plus that here the challenges are tough. Gran Turismo is tough too, but at least Gran Turismo is fun. And here it's just tough, and not necessarily because the game is intended to be tough. Okay, the game is intended to be tough, but it also gets tough involuntarily by having some glitches. In the game you get challenges like keeping the average speed, taking braking tests, driving in a racing line, clearing out a track before the time runs out, drive without taking damage, which is particularly tough because your opponent's AI isn't the best and will bump into you sometimes, which makes driving without taking damage a really challenging chore, especially in the bigger difficulties. Also in some of them, I've spotted that the indicator isn't accurate. I mean, how can two 100% accurate stops make 75% and how did I get 90% from 75 since I scored 60% accuracy. The indicator in some of the challenges isn't accurate all of the time and this is especially frustrating when you see how tough the challenges are and if you get stuck at a challenge it's bad luck for you because unless you clear that challenge you won't unlock the next one and compared to the first game these challenges feel like they are DLC content for the previous game. I mean they belong to the previous game. It feels like disc 2 of the same game. If the challenges would have been included in the previous game, then it would have been one of the most awesome PSP games ever made. But even so, the game still has a lot to offer as a standalone game. It's just that unless you're a challenge seeking individual that really is into difficult games, you shouldn't play the game. I recommend you to play it only if you're into challenges that sometimes get unfair because the game glitches. Even so, it's still a very good game. But if it didn't have the occasional glitched indicators, it would have been an amazing game too. I mean, the car mechanics are the same like in the previous game, the graphics are the same, and the gameplay feels fresh. If you have the two games by you, they complete each other and make up for a duo you will never forget. And both games have ad hoc multiplayer, which means that if you have some friends by with a PSP, you can play local multiplayer races, which are fun. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.